This short video explains some of the frameworks from Strategic Management Dynamics that you may find useful in existing classes. Mastering Strategy Dynamics requires something of an investment. The textbook is 670 pages. We've recorded over six hours of video class segments. There are several simulation exercises to practice the frameworks for each chapter. And there are 15 substantial worksheets to help in using the approach in real cases. However, it's possible to use many of the frameworks with only a limited understanding of the approach. And in the next few minutes, we'll give some suggestions as to how you can add this short selection to classes you already teach. Most of the frameworks on this list are relevant to a very wide range of case examples, and so they can be inserted in existing class discussions. We should also add that most can be adapted to public service and not-for-profit situations, as well as to business cases. Chapter 1 outlines the importance of understanding how performance for an organisation is changing over time, why performance has come to the point that it has today, where it's going if strategy continues as it is, and how to make substantial improvement. It's rather straightforward then to take part of your class discussion to complete this chart on the right. Ask class to help sketch in the history of the organisation's performance, discuss where that performance trajectory might go in future, and discuss what a reasonable aspiration would be for improving that future performance. You'll find more information on this in chapter one and in the video class summary that goes with that chapter. The book uses the financial results of Amazon.com as an illustrative example. You'll find this chart is suitable for pretty well any case discussion. This is the key strategic imperative for the management team in just about every organization. The way to use this framework is to ask the class to help you fill in the blank chart for the case they're discussing. For commercial cases, performance will usually be some financial measure, profit or sales, for example. But in non-for-profit cases, performance may be any kind of objective that's being pursued. Chapter 2 explains the importance of tangible resources to performance. You may be familiar with the resource-based view of strategy, which focuses on the subtle and complex resources that are thought to explain competitive advantage. But we're starting before this to understand the simple tangible factors that make up any organisation. Businesses will typically have customers and may also have intermediaries such as dealers or wholesalers. And on the supply side, they will have capacity of some form. They will employ staff, they will offer products or services, and they will have cash. For more information on these simple tangible resources, see chapter two or the video class summary that goes with that chapter. Again, this is suitable for most case discussions because these simple categories of resource arise in most cases. You can have a useful discussion about the tangible resources this particular business relies upon, specify exactly what form those resources take and what growth management will need to achieve if it's going to hit its aims for future performance improvements. Strategy Dynamics places great importance on the issue of how resources accumulate and deplete, and customers are clearly an important example of this. This framework for Chapter 3 shows how growth in the total sales of a business depend on the number of customers it has and on the average purchase rate of those customers. It then goes on to focus attention on how customers are won and how customers are prevented from being lost. It's then useful to give some consideration to the actions and decisions that management take in their effort to control these three items, together with the actions of competitors and external factors that may make that task difficult for them. You'll find more information on this framework in Chapter 3 and in the Summary segment and Segment 3.1 of the video class that supports that chapter. The low fare airline industry is used as an example of this framework and is also used in later chapters to develop a richer picture of the Strategy Dynamics framework. You'll find this exhibit useful in most cases as well. Customers drive sales for most businesses. So you can start this short discussion by replacing the curve on the right with the sales rate for the case you're discussing. The questions to pose here include where has and will this company's sales growth or decline actually come from? Are customers being won or lost? Or are they changing the rate at which they're buying? Then you can ask questions about what's causing this to happen and how management can influence it. 
Chapter 5 introduces the idea of the customer quality curve. The general point being made here is that building more resources is not the same as having resources that are of good quality. This curve works by stacking up the revenue contributions from the largest customers on the left and progressively smaller customers as you move across to the right. You'll find more information on how this framework is used on pages 267 to 273 and in video class segment 5.2. This framework too is suitable for many case discussions because pretty much all firms will have some quality curve of customers. You can ask class what this curve might look like for the company that you're discussing. Even when there's no case information on this, it's often possible to hypothesize about what that curve may look like. Is the business, for example, likely to have a small number of very large customers and a long tail of small ones? Or is the customer profile likely to be more balanced? You can then go on and ask how management should seek to improve the quality of its business. Should it, for example, be trying to rationalize its smaller customers or try to develop a new business model to serve smaller customers more effectively and profitably? A particularly powerful framework concerns the customer pipeline. This is one particular example of the principle that many resources develop through different stages. The boxes in this diagram contain the number of customers in each stage and the activities and decisions that management take seek to move customers from the lower left to the upper right. Once again, you can start by replacing that curve on the right with the sales trajectory for the case you're discussing. You'll find information on this framework on pages 344 to 365 of the book and in video class segment 6.1. This framework can be used for cases concerning markets that are in the process of being developed. Questions you can ask include how much of this opportunity has the business already developed? Where should marketing, sales and other efforts focus? And how much progress should the organisation be expected to make and over what time scale in order to deliver the improvement in the sales rate shown in the chart on the right. The strategy dynamics analysis of competitive rivalry can get quite complex, but here too it's possible to simplify the framework and use it for general class discussion. You'll find more information on this framework in Chapter 7 and in the video class 7 summary. This framework is most suitable for cases where specific competitors are identified and where some information is available about their customers and sales. This framework can be put on the board and you can ask questions about where a particular firm's challenges lie. Is it, for example, struggling to develop or capture new potential customers or is it engaged in a battle to steal customers from its competitors? Alternatively, is it fighting to stop its own customers being taken away? Note, by the way, that where customers buy from multiple firms, a different framework is needed and you'll find that explained also in Chapter 7. These are just some of the frameworks that you can readily add to existing strategy classes. Thank you for watching. You'll now be returned to the Teachers page.